You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob, still settling in here. This is episode 685. As always, we're glad we're, that we're glad you're with us. Today we are excited to be talking about schools, uh, like high schools, middle schools, uh, using students to film things. I'm actually kind of happy to talk about this because um, it goes back into the furtherance of a business. And now that we've had this clarified by multiple FAA officials, I'm kind of happy to talk about this uh, because I think it's great for students to be flying and learning to fly and I think it's a great thing for STEM education but there's also I think an ethical line that needs to be set with the schools uh, and I think that that line has already been set by the FAA so I'm excited to to really talk about it but um, Mm. before we get into today's question I just want to say thanks to a few of our sponsors uh, Colorado Drone Chargers if you fly a lot Let's say you fly a Phantom and you're doing a bunch of drone-based missions all day long, or you're flying a bunch of real estate and you need to stay on top of charging all those batteries. I cannot recommend Colorado Drone Chargers enough. I mean, I love their products. I love the ballistic case that they come in. I love the ease of use to carry them around. You just plug it into one outlet and you simultaneously charge four batteries. In fact, since we started filming these three shows, we've already charged four batteries and a remote control. So thank you. So it works. Colorado Drone Chargers. Uh, you can get a discount by being a listener to the Ask a Drone You podcast. Just use discount code DRONEU8 to get a discount to those awesome chargers. That's coloradodronechargers.com. Also, a big special thank you to our friends at videoblocks.com. Just go to videoblocks.com forward slash drone. If you're interested in getting access to hundreds of thousands of copyright-free clips, motion graphics and audio clips Um, it's a subscription-based website so you'll have access to all these clips to use all year long and you just pay one low price just go to videoblocks.com forward slash drone all right rob i'm ready to i'm ready to hear the question hi guys my name is tom and i'm a teacher at high school and i teach video and we do use drones the question i have is that if Local businesses ask the students to shoot footage with the drones and they use it on their websites and so on and so forth. Is the school or the pilots or I myself required to have a 107 license if the businesses give charitable donations back to the school? So very good question. Well, I'm always fascinated by just how many different nuances the quest, this particular question, because it's the same question that gets asked over and over again, just in a little bit different of a twist, right? But it's a good question. That doesn't mean that it's not a good question. Um, I don't know. So what are, you, what are your thoughts on this? I, short I, podcast? I, it is going to be a short one for <laughs> sure. But I will say this. Um, it seems like everyone is always looking for a tweak or a way around the rules. And honestly, it's never been easier to get a drone license. So I kind of get a little annoyed by it. Well, by the way, I do not think that's what's going on here. No, I don't think so either. I think he's just trying to ask for his school. Um, And I actually reached out to the FAA recently to ask about enforcements on this exact issue. And they actually went after a church Mm. and they went after two other nonprofits because they said that, oh, well, it was for charity. We didn't pay the guy. Well, it's like, well, it's a furtherance of your business. And they're like, well, we don't make a profit. And they're like, that doesn't matter. Right. Because it's the FAA tried to clarify this at the very beginning by saying if it's the furtherance of a business or an entity, it is it falls under Part 107. So, for example, if he is getting his students to shoot stuff and provide that stuff that 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 media to the school itself, that is further using that media to gain sponsors and to gain donors, that is the furtherance of their business. I mean. If they're a school, they're getting revenue from that media. That is the furtherance of a business. So they would absolutely need a 107 license. Now, there's a different thing. If the students are capturing footage Mm -hmm. and they put it on their website, meaning the student made a website that is for the student to showcase the fun things that they've been doing, that's okay. Right. 
if the student takes the same media and uploads it to the school's webpage, that is a furtherance of a business. And the school, the student, and the teacher can be held liable. Now, uh, one thing I talked about with the FAA recently is, you know, what does that look like? And they're like, well, here's how we calculate it. It's not a, we see your video and you're going to get a $2,500 fine for the video or an $11,000 fine for the video. Where did you fly? How many batteries did you fly? Because you will be fined for every single flight that you made. Ouch. And all they have to do is confiscate your phone, check the log, and it's game over. Yeah, you know, I really hope that there's some just common sense from the FAA's perspective in a situation like this. I know we say all the time, and it's true, that ignorance is not a defense of the law, right? But I just hope that there's some semblance of, look, we've noticed this, you cannot do it, don't do it again. Mm-hmm. In a case like this, where you're talking a, about a students. compliance philosophy. Yeah, and where, where a teacher is, it's a video class, he's introducing the drone side of video to his students. Which I love. Yeah, awesome. it's fantastic. And so now they've expanded that into doing some stuff for businesses, which of course leads to the 107 being necessary. Um, so if they're 17 and they want to get a 107, I think the school should pay the student. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's where that ethical line is because the school is straight up use. I mean, when you teach the students about something, that's one thing. When you teach the students about something and they capture it for the school and then the school uses it for marketing, that's kind of crossing an ethical line. Like I would then go to the school and be like, if you want to use my footage, here's a contract. You can have you can have some rights to it, not exclusive. If you want exclusive, that's going to be ten times more. But you know, you're going to pay me at least fifteen hundred bucks for that's this. Like, yeah. So that's ja- the negotiator. Jacob in me. shows up at home. Dad, I need you to help me write up a contract. <laughs> I'm in a video class. I got some opportunities here. I see Jacob standing up. I see that. I'm just saying. I love it. So one question that I have for you is, would it suffice, and I think it would, for the teacher to get the 107? Absolutely. As long as only, because only one student would be able to fly at a time though, right? Correct. Now, I love that you brought this up actually. So if the teacher has a 107, he can deem any person pilot in command. He's still ultimately responsible for the flight. And yes, he can only uh, be the VO or, you know, oversee one flight at a time. Mm -hmm. But if the teacher gets a 107, the student goes out and flies. The teacher is there with the student. The student then gives the footage to the school to use to get donors, to use to get funding, revenue, whatever. Totally okay. Yeah. Cool. So that's going to be 150 bucks for the test. Not very much. School should pay for that. And, I mean, I know this awesome place that has, like, three different ways to learn the 107 and can pretty much say, you know, pass our quizzes at 90% and you're ready to go take the test. <laughs> you do? Yeah. I, it's the I Drone U. It. Oh, cool. Yeah, I have uh, heard yeah, of those yeah. guys. Just go to thedroneu.com because it's only $47 a month to get access to that class. I really do wonder. I mean, maybe there's some, some grant money that could be used for 107s for the students. There's got to be a way to do that, I would think. So that the student doesn't have to. Well, fork remember, that money they out. have to meet their basic requirements too, which means, you know, they're a basic age, I believe 17. So. Of course, right. But, you know, the other thing is you don't necessarily have, for example, a computer class. Well, I don't know. That's probably not a good analogy. I'm not going to go down that road. But bottom line is somebody there needs to have 107 to be doing what they're doing. Exactly. Right. Which isn't that hard. No. Yeah. And I'm so, I, I know it's kind of started the show with. Uh, I'm kind of annoyed by this question. It's not anything to do with the question asker. I love that you're asking the question. I love that you're helping out students. I love that you're trying to give them more uh, creative um, plans or strategies to put in their video playbook. That's Mm -hmm. awesome. That's an amazing teacher. Yeah. So just, I would say, you know, you got to be really careful about crossing that ethical line when you're using the students for the school's benefit. Sure. Although I would also add that going to these businesses and doing this work for the business, they're getting an education in a whole different format than most kids are going to get. Just having that interaction with the business and and seeing what that looks like. If they're involved in that, yeah. I hope they are. Well, they're they're out there flying. So to some extent. The teacher could take it to the next level and be like, all right, we're going to shoot some footage for this business, but we're going to go in and negotiate a price for it. That'd be awesome. That's a class. Yeah. Hoof. That'd be great. Anyway, well, that's going to do it for us today, guys. Uh, If you want to learn how to get your Part 107 license, then just go to thedroneu.com. And if this information was helpful to you, don't be afraid to share it with a friend or leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you download the show. Thanks very much for listening. We do appreciate it. And we'll see you the next time. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. (laughs) 